marvel for a moment at the result of combusting compressed fuel and air in Ferrari's stripped out, fully focused 488 Pista. And yet, the glittering awards and sunny superlatives heaped upon the 458 Speciale mean that the 488 Pista, even a bright yellow one like this, will always sit in the shadow of its predecessor. Why? Because, well, the 458 Speciale was enough. It was more than enough. It was blooming near perfect, actually. And so the 488, it didn't need to be more. The Pista represents a supercar arms race that I think plenty of people are seeing is increasingly irrelevant. I'll say it again, who needs or wants to go faster than you can in a 458 Speciale? The turbocharged 3.9 is not as pure as the NA 4.5 that went before it. The extra grip means that it's even harder to enjoy on the road. However, does that make the 711 brake horsepower 488 Pista a bad car? No, far from it. That would be like saying that someone with two rather than three Michelin stars is a bad chef. It's one of those cars that, unlike the 458, where that would rev out and obviously had a nice sounding top end. In this, you can be traveling extremely quickly, about two or three gears higher than you would be if you were actually bringing it out. It's easy to forget that it has still more pace to offer, which means that when do unleash all the pace. It is unbelievable. It's even more extraordinary when you actually try and use all the revs. The chassis, like the 458, is mind-bendingly good. On a road like this, where there are lots of dips and crests, it's a, it's a bit of a trade-off because you think, in one way, you want the bumpy road setting, but then actually, on a road like this, where take off, you then want the extra support of the, the normal setting, I suppose. You can hear the nose scuffing there. This is one thing this car really does tend to do. It will scuff its nose, so you need to be always reading the road as to where it might catch you out through the compressions. Every time the maestros at Maranello launch a new supercar, we hear a lot about the technology that underpins the performance. F1 track, SSC with FDE, FRS, SCM E, the sophisticated yet subtle systems that allow mortals to mimic the driving divinities. But the nice thing is that even if you go to CT or ESC off, you still have a car that actually is just <laughs> so good. Even without all those electronic aids on, you've still got a car that is just so beautifully balanced. The other thing that I think you can definitely feel at work, one of the, it's not an aid, I suppose, it's a system more than anything else, is the, the E-diff, the E-differential, because the way the rear wheels do claw at the tarmac out of corners, the traction it can get is phenomenal. And you just sense it working in a really nice way, just helping you. It doesn't feel unnatural, it just, you just know it's there for you, it's on your side. I love driving this car in the wet actually, which might seem weird because it can be very spiky in some respects because the rear wheels have got more torque than they'd know what to do with in a month of Sundays. But that's where the steering comes into its own. It is incredibly quick and every time you get into one of these cars, you have to just readjust, recalibrate your inputs, but once you're used to what this car does, 
It's like being given a steak knife after trying to use the butter knife on your sirloin for years. Yes, the car can be spiky, but you get used to A, the throttle inputs, and then the fact that when it's over the limit, you have this fantastically sharp steering to be able to catch the rear end. And that means it's just beautifully playful, actually. And in the wet, of course, the grit limits are lower, so you feel like you can just have more fun more of the time. And perhaps, curiously, that best sums up my feelings about the Pista. It is a brilliant, involving, life-affirming experience in exactly the conditions when you can't exploit its extra power and additional grip. Make of that what you will. Thank you.